I'm taking 25 of the best wonder kids in Football Manager and putting them together in one super team for 15 seasons. However, rather than see them dominate in a top European league, I've moved them all to Geylang International FC in Singapore to get to the top the hard way. The Singapore Premier League is one of the least popular top flights in Asia and Geylang haven't won a title since 2001. So if our players can win the league with Geylang and make it more popular in Asia, they'll then have the chance to take on all the money the Saudi league has in the Asian Champions League. After winning that, it gives them a shot at the Club World Cup to be crowned the best team on the planet. So let's meet the squad. In goal, we have Guilherme Restes, the keeper with the highest potential ability in the game, and he's protected by a backline of Ivan Fresneda, Usman Diamande, Antonio Silva, and Alejandro Balde. Our midfield three is made up of Warren Zare Emery, Gabby, and Archie Gray, and then our lethal attack features Laminia Mal, the player with the highest potential ability in the game, Endrick, and Evan Ferguson. Pretty good if you ask me. We've also got a bunch of backups in each position. Because they're all so young and no one knows quite how good they're going to be, they all have a potential ability range which the game randomizes every time you make a new save. But I've made sure each of them is set to their maximum potential ability, hopefully for the best results. But given the Singapore Premier League is nowhere near as good as the top European leagues, there's a good chance these players will never reach that potential ability. So obviously by the end of season one, Geylang won the title, winning all but three games. Edna Ferguson only scored 26 goals though, which feels pretty low for a team that scored 140 across the season. What is interesting is looking at which players got the most game time, and they seem to be very settled with rest testing goal and a sense back partnership of Antonio Silva and Castello Lacaba. They've still got real life manager Nor Ali, who's played them in a 4 4 2 this season, which has moved some players around. In my head, Baldi would play left back and Diamande would play at centre back, but they've been utilised at left midfield and right back. So this means that players like Desiree Dewey and Mikey Moore haven't had much game time despite having higher potential ability than some of the players starting. So for those players who don't get regular game time when they're young, there's no chance they're going to reach their potential ability. They also did the double by winning the Singapore Cup, and it means they're going to be in the AFC Champions League next season. It works in a very similar way to the UEFA Champions League. There are 10 groups of four teams, but because Asia is so big, groups A to E features teams from West Asia, and groups F to J feature teams from East Asia. The top team automatically qualifies for the next round, and then the best three teams from the rest of the groups in the East and West also qualify for the last 16. The knockout rounds stay regionalized until the final when West faces East over two legs. So as Singapore is in East Asia, they played against Ulsan from South Korea, Yokohama Marinos from Japan, and Song Lam from Vietnam, where our Wonder Kids tops the group. AFC rules state that the matchday squad must have no more than five non-Asian players, and of course, none of our Wonder Kids are Asian, which is why I changed all of our players' nationality to be from Singapore. In the second round, Geylang were actually drawn against Ulsan, who they played in the group stage, and won. This put them against Jeonbuk, also from South Korea, in the quarterfinals, which they won again. And in the semi-finals, they beat Chinese side Shanghai to set up a final against Al Wada from the United Arab Emirates. At home, they win the first leg 3-1, and then they dominate the second leg, win it 2-0 and lift the trophy. Not bad for their first effort, which also sees them qualify for the 2029 Club World Cup. But can they retain their title in season three? Well, they top a group featuring South Korean side FC Seoul, Thai side Port FC and Hanoi FC from Vietnam. Which is quite nice because I'm currently wearing a Geylang International shirt and I actually own the Hanoi FC shirt as well. They were sent to me by Sangalo, who feature and promote some of the biggest local clubs from around the world and sell their jerseys internationally. Sangalo currently have a sale on, so you can get 25% off a Geylang and Hanoi shirt and up to 40% off others. And the best part is, in buying these jerseys, we're helping these clubs generate extra revenue streams, which they may use to help fund youth football, and Geylang, for example, could produce their own Wonder Kids. Because the Wonder Kids we gave them got knocked out in the second round to Kawasaki Frontale so there's no back-to-back -back Champions League win. So I'll leave a link to Sangala's website down in the description. As I say, it was a big sale on now and there are some new clubs coming soon. So make sure you check them out. To get over the Champions League exit, Geylang did the domestic double again, but this time they won every single game in the league. 
And we are seeing some good development from some of our young players, as seven of them now have a current ability of over 150 out of 200. But the ones at the bottom of the list with little game time aren't going to develop. But if they have serious aspirations about the Club World Cup, it's these players who need to develop in order to have a full squad that can compete. Although maybe they're already experiencing that, because in Season 4, they don't even make it out the group stage, finishing in third place. But something odd seems to be going on here. In Geylang's 4-0 win over Bangkok United, all of our Wonder Kids featured in the matchday squad. But in the 3-0 loss to Kawasaki Frontale, only Archie Gray, Desiree Dewey, and Mikey Moore played. Well, it turns out at the same time, they were all playing for Singapore in the AFF Championship, an international tournament held every two years for countries from Southeast Asia. So now we might be in a situation where every other year, all our players are playing for the Singapore national team, and it means that's going to affect their campaign in the AFC Champions League, so we might just see them lose in the group stage. So in season five, when they have all of their players, they top the group against Kashima from Japan, Daejeon from South Korea, and Buraram United from Thailand. They then defeat Sydney FC in the second round, and break more Australian hearts by beating Melbourne City FC in the quarters. However, Beijing beat them on a goals in the semi-finals who eventually lose out to Saudi side Al Itahad who are managed by Vincent Company. The worst part is Beijing's players are levels below our wonder kids. Look at their current abilities and then compare them to our players. Gavi and Javi Simmons have done a superb job and aren't too far away from their ultimate potential. But sadly, at the bottom of the list, I don't think these players are going to ever get close. In Season 6, Geylang do manage to qualify from their group, despite missing their key players for three of the games as they go to the Singapore national team as they win another AFF championship. The players are back for the second round, where they beat Ulsan from South Korea, and then Cerezo Osaka from Japan in the quarterfinals. And then they reach another final by beating Suwon from South Korea to take on Sharjah from the UAE in the final, where they win the first leg 3-1 and never looked in doubt in a 3-0 win in the second leg to win their second AFC Champions League, which also qualifies them for the 2033 Club World Cup. And it's also the perfect launch pad for their 2029 Club World Cup ambitions. They're taking on AC Milan, Stad Ren, and Monterey from Mexico in the group stage of the tournament's new format. It's a tough draw, but they manage to win every single game, which means they progress to the knockout stages. But although they beat Colombian side Club Deportivo Junior in the second round, Real Madrid were too good in the quarters and knock our boys out. However, Benfica went on to win the entire thing, and if we'd had their pathway, I think Geylang would have given Barcelona a run for their money. In Season 7, Geylang topped the group, winning every single match over Sydney FC, Pohang from South Korea, and Hiroshima from Japan. They then beat Chinese side Shandong in the second round, Ulsan in the quarterfinals, and Jeonbuk in the semi-finals to set up their first final against a club from Saudi Arabia, Al Nasser, who are managed by Robbie Keane. They have some aging stars in their team who actually beat us in the first leg at our place. But a 2-1 victory in the second leg means we go back to back in the AFC Champions League with the goal from Yeo Jeremy being decisive. The best part is he's just some random regen who other than his finishing and composure looks absolutely terrible. Our success is doing wonders for the popularity of the Singapore Premier League, which is up from 35th to 20th in rankings. And we now have four teams qualifying for the Champions League, which is as many as Saudi Arabia have. Obviously, Geylang are winning the league title every single season, which is why I've not been showing it. So in season eight, Geylang finished second in the group as most of the team go and play for the national team. But when they get back, they smash Daegu from South Korea in the second round, decimate Yokohama Marinos in the quarters, and get revenge over Beijing for the semi-final defeat in season five to set up a final against Al Hilal, where we draw 2-2 at home after being 2-0 up, but a Vito Roque goal ensures that we make it three in a row by winning the second leg. I don't think our players are going to improve much more from here on out, so it's great to see that Gavi and Javi Simmons are just one ability away from their potential, and a whole bunch of players are insanely good. Also sneaking in there is Walid Salah, the club's 10th best player, who is just this random kid from Egypt that they signed on a free 
transfer of season from Al Ali. But my favourite part of this is Gaylang have two of the best 10 players in the database. And when Haaland and Mbappe retire, Gavi could well be the best player in the world. But because they play in Asia and not Europe, there's no chance of them winning the Ballon d'Or. In season nine, Gaylang topped the group winning every single game. Once again, they progressed through the second round by beating John Book, breeze past Sydney FC in the quarterfinals, and break the hearts of Melbourne City FC fans again to set up another final against Al Hilal. They lose the first leg 2-1, but win the second leg 3-2 to make it 4-4 on aggregate, but the away goal counts, so Al Halal win the AFC Champions League this season. So maybe Geylang are starting to lose some of their powers, especially as in the following season, they then lose in the semi-finals to Kawasaki Frontale. Evan Ferguson missed a crucial penalty in the second leg, which saw our boys crash out. And again, it's not like Kawasaki's players are any good compared to ours but it's not quite as embarrassing as the Beijing loss a few seasons ago. Still, this summer we have the Club World Cup and we're taking on Portland Timbers, Flamengo and Lyon in the group stage. And of course, we pick up wins in all three of our matches, which puts us into the second round, where we lose to New York Red Bulls. I think this might be our most embarrassing defeat of the entire video. Mostly because we didn't load up the American leagues, so they're playing with greyed out fake players who are rubbish. And given we've got a 15 year time limit, there's only one more opportunity to win the Club World Cup, which we haven't actually qualified for yet. So in season 11, once again, our boys are top of the group, winning every single game. Yokohama Marinos were no challenge in the second round, but Kawasaki Frontale put up more of a fight in the quarterfinals but we still won. We then beat our third Japanese team in Vissel Kobe in the semi-finals to put us up against Alain from the United Arab Emirates in the final. The first leg at home ends in a nil-nil draw, but we flex our muscles in the second leg to dominate the match, win the title, and qualify for the 2037 Club World Cup. Our players are now at the peak of their powers, and we have a team that would be good enough to win the UEFA Champions League, let alone the AFC Champions League. So naturally, they win the tournament again in Season 12, beating Al Itahad in the final, and again in Season 13, beating another Saudi club, this time Al Ali. But for some reason in Season 14, they finish third in the group, and don't qualify. That might be because they've now got Steven Gerrard as the manager, but it's more likely it's because the team were playing for Singapore in the AFC Championship where they lost the final and the backups just weren't good enough to play the games and win enough of them in the AFC Champions League. So now we have our final chance of winning the Club World Cup and we've been given a pretty difficult group with Man City, RB Leipzig and Atletico Mineiro. However, they only drop points to Manchester City, which means that they progress from the group. They then beat Benfica in the second round and Porto in the quarterfinals, but lose to Real Madrid in the semis and eventually lose on penalties to Barcelona in the third place playoff. I can't believe this super team didn't go on to win the Club World Cup or the actual World Cup with Singapore. The best they got was a quarterfinal loss to Scotland in 2034. But I think we've done a good job of taking one of the worst leagues in Asia and through the power of Wonder Kids at Geylang, taking them to be the ninth most popular league in Asia. So how do you think we get on if we took over the worst team in the English Premier League and tried to rebuild them? Well, the answer is in this video on screen right now. So go ahead and give it a watch.